Brenda, for those people that don't know what Vera's about, what, what's she like? <laughs> Vera is absolutely a wonderful character. Um, she's uh, rather shambolic. She's not your normal uh, run-of-the-mill detective. You saw her in the street. The last thing you think she was is a detective. <clears throat> she looks more like a bag lady, frankly. <laughs> in fact, in the book, she's even more um, <clears throat> dishevelled than our Vera. Um, but she's a, a dedicated police officer. Um, it's her life, really. She's just totally dedicated to it. Um, she's uh, very, very good at her job, although she's, uh, she does make mistakes. Most detective, female detectives you see on the TV um, have some romantic liaison. Well, Vera is not hampered uh, with that. And uh, that's not to say um, she hasn't had um, romance in her life. I'm sure she has. She's one of these wonderfully down-to-earth people and, and part of her talents yeah. is, you know, she can chat to anybody, but yeah. she's extracting yeah. this information. Yeah, yeah, she's great. I mean, if you sat next to her on the bus, she'd be talking about uh, the bargains down the co-op. <laughs> you know, you get two-for-one packages. Um, but she's so easy to talk to and, uh, of course, it works very, very well for her when she's... Um, uh, questioning somebody. She's got the real human touch, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, and a great sense of humour too. And uh, commands such wonderful loyalty from her team. And they all think she's a bit odd and a bit tough and, a, um, you know, probably talk about her behind her back. But they all um, appreciate her and uh, are loyal to her. Even the ones that she, um, one in particular, that she um, has a bit of uh, sparring with. She doesn't suffer fools lightly. She's no nonsense. No, absolutely no nonsense <laughs> woman. She's had a tough upbringing. Um, she's an uh, only child. Her mother died when she was quite young. And, um, and I think her father thought of her as a bit of a waste of space. So she was always having to prove herself um, uh, in growing up and here she is a police officer um, his uh, her father would have thought that she was in a man's job and it was quite inappropriate for her to be doing she probably can't be very good doing it and so he was always um, putting her down but that's not a great load for her to carry because she's so incredibly resilient because of that upbringing because of uh, where they lived in a remote part of the coastline and, um, you know, you have to survive in those conditions. And she's got Jo, who's a sort of surrogate son. Jo is her wonderful, gorgeous <laughs> right-hand man, uh, Jo Ashworth. Yeah, he is kind of like a, a surrogate son to her. Um, but she, she even doesn't even let him in completely, um, as you see, uh, he asks a favour of her in this first episode. So she <laughs> has to dodge niftily. Um, she puts up she, a shell, doesn't she? Mm, yeah, she just doesn't... Some things she's not comfortable dealing with. Children are one of them. <laughs> and what sort of parts of you are in Vera then? Because you love solving quizzes and crosswords. Oh, I do love solving puzzles and uh, brain teasers. Well, we didn't have a television when we were kids, so Dad used to set us problems to do, a, um, scramble a word up, a chaotic, anagrams, and uh, or set us a riddle to solve. Oh, I love it. Yes, I'm a member of the Times Crossword Club. I love it. The harder the puzzle, the more I like it. If you had to get a wardrobe through a keyhole, I would work out of a way. <laughs> I might never solve it, but I would love trying to solve it. And, and you grew up in Ramsgate, didn't mm. you? Do you go back there often? Oh, I go back to my hometown, Ramsgate, as often as I can. Uh, it's uh, a lovely, lovely place. It's such a comfort being there. So many memories, so many ghosts, you know, you can imagine people walking down the street and, you know, it's, I'm from a large family and um, some of them are still living there and uh, it's nice when we we'll sort of go down en masse, it's lovely. What's the magic of broad stairs in the Ramsgate area for you? Well, you know, it's just the happy times of childhood um, and we were so fortunate, even though we were poor growing up, you know, 
we had the seaside, so you know, people in big cities growing up, poor people, don't have the money to go on holidays, go to the seaside. We ha had it all the time. Even in the winter time, it's great to play on the beach. And, you know, we were just so very, very lucky. And then yeah, I grew up just after the war, so um, there was an, an air of optimism um, about the place everywhere. So it was a very, very nice environment. We used to play on the bomb sites, you know, took a hammering during the war. The old Luftwaffe, you know, left its mark <laughs> there, but we'd play on the bomb sites. And, um, all now, you know, sort of been rebuilt, of course, and rather trendy at the moment. Do you know Ramsgate's got the third best architecture in the country? Go on, what? Are after we? Bath and Cheltenham, yeah. It's lovely, it's a lovely place. It's a little, you know, well, well kept secret. Ramsgate. Little haven. Mm. And are you still patron of the Sea Cadets? I am, yes. T.S. Bulldog. <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, a couple of summers ago, uh, they had a tattoo and I had to stand on a podium uh, <laughs> with the command of the fleet and uh, along came the, the massed bands of East Kent uh, playing their marvellous musicians they are marching along and as they got to me they went to go right, eyes, left, what was it, that, that, that. Uh, <laughs> I was so proud of them, I didn't want to laugh or cry, it was so wonderful. You have done some amazing films and your OBE now. That's wonderful. Were you thrilled to get that? Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it when it came through the door. I thought it was a tax demand. <laughs> One of these official looking envelopes. Um, and I took my old Aunt Fran to the palace with me. And uh, sadly, she, she died just before Christmas. Um, but uh, she started to say, Oh, if I go to the palace, will I have to wear, I thought she was going to say, a hat? She, but she said, well, I have to wear my teeth. I said, <laughs> I said not if you don't want to, Fran. <laughs> but because she was in her push chair, of course, she was wheeled to the front, uh, of course. Um, but when they struck up the national anthem, the trumpet fanfare, she shot out of her chair and stood to attention. I was like, oh, people think we've put you in the chair under false pretenses. Sit down, sit down. But, but she loved um, a murder mystery program, loved them. So I had, uh, fortunately, I did have um, a, a rough uh, DVD of our first episode. Um, it wasn't finally, uh, it wasn't edited, pr finished, uh, the editing wasn't finished on it, the music wasn't on there, but she did have a sneaky look at that. So uh, she did get to see Vera in action. Because she plays some wonderful roles, you know, Little Voice and Secret and Lies, it goes on and on. But yeah. what, you've never played a detective before, and so why did you want to be part of this? No, I just thought it was, at my time of life, it's, it's wonderful when such a superb character lands in your lap. Um, you know, I consider myself very, very fortunate because I can think of dozens of act actresses who could play the part. And um, so for it to come to me, it was great. Um, it, it, it kind of ties in with my, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in a forensic laboratory, for instance. I would just love to see how all of that works and catching the criminals and, you know, banging them up. Did you speak to any detectives to research well, in this In fact, role? my driver on the way to set each day uh, was a superior officer to Vera um, in his day job before he, <laughs> before he retired. And so uh, on the way to work, we, we um, thought up the, the perfect crime between us. <laughs> We can work that in. Um, sorry. No, that's Maybe good. we can work that in somewhere. And you've got wonderful guest actors on this as well. Gina McKee in the first one. Oh, I mean, how lucky were we to get Gina? She is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I've always been a fan of hers. It, it seems to me everything she's in is classy. So I hope some of the Gina dust uh, sprinkled on our first epi episode. Well, lots of Brenda dust there as well, and it <laughs> is spectacular. And just finally, let's talk about the wonderful Northumberland countryside, because this sort of rugged, vibrant nature is sort of like Vera. Oh, uh, I'd never been to Northumberland before. 
Uh, it took my breath away. It is such a beautiful part of our country. And, and so many different er different terrains, so the beautiful moors and the, the seascapes, fantastic. In fact, we were filming um, on uh, along the beach on a very um, sort of overcast day, and it seemed that the sea was higher than we were, but it was beautiful. And the, I was walking along, and um, the, the crew were on the beach, and suddenly I saw them all running up the beach. I thought, what are they doing? But this wave came in and <laughs> practically washed us out. But it came up to our waist, and, but then we had to carry on. We had one more shot to get in. So, but they were only filming from the waist upwards, so we were squelching <laughs> along, filled our Wellingtons. And you enjoyed playing the accent? you know? The oh yeah, no, I couldn't do it before. Um, but I had help with it, and of course the gorgeous uh, David, you know, is her sidekick, um, uh, was there on hand all the time. But he told me I didn't have anything to worry about, and I had the stamp of approval from the people of Newcastle and Northumberland, so I was pleased about that. They are wonderful people and extremely oh, warm. Oh, yes, yeah. so, so friendly. I loved Newcastle. I loved working there. I really, really did. If you go into a shop to try uh, on a jacket or a dress or something, so, you know, they stop and say, oh, no, I prefer that one. Go on, try, try that. Why don't you try that one on there, pet? You know, <laughs> they're just, just so worth, friendly. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. warm and down to mm. well, And the crew, everybody on Vera was uh, first class and that's one thing I appreciate uh, with ITV for um, they paid as much attention to the technicalities of the thing to the crew and the art department um, you know gave them absolutely what they needed and it shows yeah great production mm. values that's the word I was looking for but they but the one thing that people say about working up in the northeast is it's oh it's cold with that north wind blowing it is very cold with that north wind blowing. Ah, oh, th th there were some night shoots. It was freezing cold. Do you have the thermals on? Oh, yes. But it's good for Vera because I'm bulked out quite a lot. Uh, you know, I could put on as much as I like, so I was warmer than most people because she's like, there's layers and layers and layers because she's bigger than I am, um, you know. <laughs> So it's quite nice, you know, no makeup, you just fall into work, it's great. <laughs> yeah. and, and for those people that just really, you want, you want to tune in to watch Vera, why, why should they bother? You, and you should watch uh, Vera because she is one of us. She is an ordinary person. She could be living next door. She's a, a masterful um, crime solver and she has a sense of humour and the stories are great. Um, they're from Anne Cleve's novels, and uh, she's not um, an award-winning crime writer for nothing. And it's got you in. Yay! <laughs> it's a winner. Thank you very much, Brenda. Thank That's you. Great.